So the day has come. Oh, it's time to pull the windlass. Um, while we were cruising, our windlass um, basically seized up. And uh, so today is the day where we find out whether it is just gear oil. If that's so, then I'm winning. Yay! However, if there's anything wrong with the electrical connections, Bevy wins. Yeah, but if we fix it, we both win. Absolutely. And we like both to be winners. Yay! Okay, job number one. Coffee! My life is grounded in a firm routine of coffee, sleep and work. I am not boring. I just stick to what I know. Number two, pull the windlass. Job number three, fix it. Right, seems fairly straightforward. Three simple steps. Yeah. I'm a bit worried about number two. Yeah. Never mind, we'll do it. Before you start uh, a job like this, you need to make sure that everything is electrically isolated. So uh, we made sure that the switch underneath the chart table was set to off always good idea uh, but on top of that <laughs> have removed all the cables off the uh, relay so that um, if i need to pull the cables through i'm in a good position to do that uh, but also i am absolutely insulated there is going to be no electrical <laughs> current to the windlass at all and um, if you can be uh, if you can do that and make sure that you're safe uh, then great all right so the first thing i've done is i've released the manual clutch and the gypsy because while it's all screwed down to the deck it's, there's quite a bit of force needed to do that it's easier to do it while it's all screwed down than trying to hold still down below decks while one of us twists and the other turns so the gypsy is now loose uh, so we can take it off easily in the chain stoppers and things like that. And the next job is to lift the whole unit out and for that I need a 13mm spanner and I've got a ratcheting spanner to make the job easier. So, onward ho. So what's happened? Help, helping with this particular job, Ev? Not being distracted by people with cameras. <laughs> uh, no, I, I put WD-40 onto the bolts. Uh -huh. earlier and I managed to take these off my hands I'm quite pleased with that I mean I had to loosen them with the spanner but once I got them loose the, the oiliness of the WD has done its job I've no idea what this thing weighs you know <laughs> we'll soon find out the answer is fairly simple it weighs a lot some salt from under the unit. Um, I've loosened these little screws but I still haven't figured out how to get this back cover off. Um, it may require a couple of taps or something heavy just to separate it because we're hoping to remove the wiring here and go from there. That was a lot of work wasn't it Bev? Ah, okay, it's going to point these out. These yeah. are obviously the three that will need to label these. Yes. But they look to be in good order, actually. They do. But looking at that amount of rust, uh, not rust, salt, yeah. and those seals will need replacing. But that's the motor. Yep. Yeah, and obviously it can be detached from these, using these bolts. Yeah. Okay, I'm filming you, but I need to see the item. That's it. <laughs> and this week on Winner Windless, we have a cover. Um, we finally got the cover off after a lot of gentle tapping with a hammer and whacking and just basically pulling and working until it came loose. It did come loose. It was only these two bolts holding it in. But inside, there's a bit of salt that's got in there, but generally the electrical connections that we can see so far look good. So the job now is to remove these, uh, label these electrics, remove them, and then take the whole unit downstairs so we can take it apart. <laughs> <laughs> You're Austin cables. I know. What we did was um, we put the um, a halyard onto it so that we could pull it up while I um, m basically manoeuvred the cables through. Um, 
tricky but not undoable but the amount of salt is just ridiculous right we've got the entire unit here um there's a number of components this is the motor which appears to be held in with three bolts and we're going to see if we can remove this as a single piece this is the um the gypsy which pulls the chain and it has this little interesting feature which we weren't aware of but the gypsy has little notches on it and this little thing can be pushed in when the, the anchor is over to stop the gypsy turning so it's it's like a chain lock just to stop the the chain running out um it's quite a useful thing to take the gypsy off we have to remove the chain stopper down here right the front of it this is the oil top up and I don't have a spanner big enough for it so it'll just be loosened up with a pipe wrench until I can turn it by hand. We did do this in Tobermory we, and the problem was because we were hoping to put in some more oil weren't we Bav? We were because apparently the only way to get oil out of this unit is to take this plastic bung out and tip it up until the oil comes back out. This, this is your fill hole. And we can find no recommendation of how much oil to put in. So we have a measuring jug. And what we will do is we will tip this up and put it into the measuring jug. But I'm going to lighten it up a wee bit by taking the gypsy off because that will at least make my life a bit easier. Okay, so this is what we've got out. This is a 350 odd mil, just shy of 400, of what was in there. And you can see that it is a bit thick, black and sludgy. Now, we do have the replacement oil. And we're going to pour some of this in to flush this out. But we've noted how much is in there. So it's about half a litre has got to go in here. As a rid of thumb, because just under half a litre has come out. And I'm pretty sure there's still some stuck in here. So... This is what it currently looks like, and this is what it should look like. Okay. So you can see the difference there between the two. Yeah, I, I could see that the oil was very runny. Tell you what, what I can do is I can put a bit of this oil on here. Yep. And I can put a bit of this oil on here. And there's the difference. Yeah. God, this is going to put muscles on me. So what we're doing is we're just um, changing the oil and then that will bring out and you can see it's still very sludgy. But we'll do this several times just so that it cleans out whatever gunk's in there. Oh, God. Whew. I think it light. As I said earlier, we got about half a litre of sludge out of this. We have a one litre bottle of SAE 90 oil, which apparently is the right kind for this. And we've currently got, according to the strip on the side of this, I shall just put on my secret enabling devices. According to this, we've got something in the region of half a litre left. So we've used about half of this. And I think we're going to call it quits there. Uh, this is running out a lot cleaner. Okay, there's a few little bits in there, but compared to what came out originally, this is good. And we've got enough here to fill this chamber back up again and use it. So I'm going to stop it at this point, put the lid on so it don't spill it, and say that we've given the inside of this a good clean because this has been sitting for a while while I've been getting rid of the old oil. And it's coming out and I can see through it. It's transparent. So as far as I'm concerned, it's clean enough. You never get these things perfect. It's like changing your engine oil. There's always a bit of sludge left in the bottom, but it doesn't affect the engine as long as you get the bulk of the oil completely clean. And that's where I am at this point, and I think I'm going to just call it.
call it quits here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to see if I can remove the motor. Uh, the motor is held in with three 5mm Allen bolts and I'm going to undo them very gently and if the motor shows play and can pull back a little bit, then I'm going to assume that I can just lift the whole motor out and give it a go. Um, if on the other hand the motor is rock solid, I'm going to assume it's stuck in a bearing race or it's between gears and there's nothing I can do with it. I'm just going to see what happens. Okay, so I've got my 5mm Allen key and I'm going to see if I can take these bolts, loosen these bolts out a bit. They're quite stiff, but I'm just going to apply constant pressure and it loosened up quite nicely. So I'll do the same with this one. There's three of them. And they're clearly well in. That one's going by hand now. Now we've just had somebody offering us advice, Bev. What were they talking about? Um, they think if there's a fault inside here, it's probably due to wear of the brushes and the commutator. And they say sometimes they can either separate or stick together. It just depends. Um, if that happens, give a whack with a hammer. Sometimes you get away with it. Sometimes you're lucky. Well, we'll see what we can find out. Well, if I take this out and I can turn the mechanism freely, it says to me that maybe I've got a jam motor. Mm. If I can't turn the mechanism, then maybe I've got a jam mechanism. Mm. But, but the question is, can I remove the motor? That's question number one. So I've taken the um, three Allen key bolts out. I'm just going to try and get rid of some excess salt before I lift this. And trust me, there's no shortage of this stuff. Okay, let's see. Does this lift out? The quick answer is no. Okay, Bev, so while I've been uh, cleaning uh, the front locker, the anchor locker, what have you been doing? Um, I've been doing the cleaning, greasing and oiling. So it's got it's got the little oil in it now and I've cleaned and greased all the bearing surfaces for the Gypsy. Um, the gasket seal that was round it is, quite frankly, toast. It's had it. And we don't have a spare gasket. So we've gone for the next best thing. We've used butyl tape, which will at least squeeze out and seal any gaps. So we, you know, we should be okay with that. Um, the electrical connections are quite close together. So what we've done is we've just put a little bit of amalgamating tape over the um, the earth, which is the one in the middle, um, and then you know that will just make sure that um, hopefully they're electrically safe and it's at least better than nothing. <laughs> What are you doing, Bev? Well, doing all the mechanical stuff like changing the oil and checking the bearing surfaces and things, we've done all that, did make a bit of difference. So we're now thinking it must be an electrical fault. And the most common electrical fault with these Lofrens came in windlasses apparently is the uh, carbon brushes muck up in the commutator and gum it all up and short it and all sorts. Apparently if we can get the motor out, it's very, very simple to take it apart and clean it. People do it on a regular basis, but I don't think this one's ever come out since the day it was put in the factory. And I'm just wiggling it slowly backwards. It's in really, really tight, but I've moved it about a centimeter. God help me. <laughs> uh, my only worry is when I pull it out, will all the oil come dribbling out the back? Um, that's a problem I'll deal with when it happens. But for now, I'm just working it backwards. Uh, well, I've got it off. Uh, so this is the actual motor. I apologise for the noise, there's a fun first turned up in the background. Um, but the good news is that I can rotate the shaft here quite freely and I can also rotate the shaft in the windlass with my fingertips as well. So there doesn't seem to be a mechanical lock, nothing is seized. Mm -hmm. So that points more and more to an electrical failure. So the next job is to get this unit open. Well, as you can see, we've still got an awful lot of salt corrosion um, in around the motor area. Um, and um, truthfully, we were a bit apprehensive about doing this job um, but we watched another video and we're going to put a link on uh, to that video you're assuming I can find the video again well if we can we're going to put a link up to there but basically it was uh, showing us how to do a different motor but it just gives us enough confidence in which to have a go at it ourselves <laughs> 
I see we're using the appliance of science again. You mean direct application of impulse force in order to um, overcome the inertia? Yeah, basically. Yes, we we're tapping it and hitting it to get it open. And whacking it with a hammer. That's the unscientific version of what I just said. This keyway, this shaft is being pulled as we take the cap off. And that keyway is now jamming up against this. So I've got to get this out. Now, as far as I can see, these are just, these are just put in with pressure. So I think I've just got to work on it with a pair of pliers till I get it out. So that's what I'm going to try doing now. These ones don't snap. No, they don't, do they? Yeah. So, Beverly, in our trials and tribulations of uh, <laughs> sorting out our windless motor, where are we up to? Um, we have the motor out. Ugh, waste a ton. You could you could do exercises with this. Um, we have the motor out. We have it partially disassembled. We've managed to get one end off. Way. We've got to get this cap off so we can remove the carbon brushes and then slide the rotor out and then we can clean it and put it all back together again. Did we need to um, get remove the key to get that one end off? Uh, liberal coats of oil and other things. The key's still there. I can't get the key out for love nor money. Yeah, but what happened is there's a rubber gasket, isn't there's there? There's a little rubbery gasket thing and it just slid over the top. Yeah, yeah. Once it got sufficiently oily and greasy, it's went pop. Fair enough. <laughs> Let me put my trousers up. I've got the wrong size jeans on and they're falling off me. Ah, <laughs> that's, getting... that's your YouTube porn for today. Right. Because <laughs> she's, she's becoming a skinny chicken. <laughs> oh, never mind that. Well, it seems to be that this bearing at the back um, that we've got was mated into this somewhere. And that's what's... It was just a case of just literally just sheer violence to get it off. So we tried all sorts of methods and stuff like that. And in the end, we just had to resort to violence, didn't we, Bev? Yeah, but it was pressed into this and that seemed to be what was holding it in. So I'm hoping that we screw it all back together. That it'll screw back in again. Hooray! Oh my goodness, look how filthy that is. That is absolutely filthy, Bev. Well, um, we um, sanded it down with um, wet and dry paper, but we did not put any lubricants or anything like that on it, so we just used it dry. Um, and that really got a good shine. Uh, and then once I've done that, I'm uh, using a cocktail stick just to remove the grit uh, between the uh, different contacts. So, um, yeah, so cocktail stick is uh, my friend. Oh, so is rubber gloves. Oh yeah, my hands are filthy. <laughs> yeah. We've not cleaned the uh, main shaft as much as the uh, contacts because this is, all this part is, is to, um, there's two parts of this motor. There's um, the copper section and that has got, um, makes an electrical contact. And then we've got um, some coils here and these make a magnetic contact, but there's no physical um, contact between them. Um, but we still need it clean so that um, it's not as important to have this part clean as the electrical contact bit. No, as we would say in the physics labs, these things are magnetically coupled. Correct. And as we also used to say in the physics lab, every couple has a moment in a field. Oh! Yeah. Yeah, don't go there. <laughs> right. Don't go there. <laughs> okay, so what's happening now, Bev? Um, well, I've just put it back together again. And um, you saw me sticking some tape and drawing lines on it. And what that was for, that was to allow me to make... So I knew exactly where the screws pass through the armatures to meet the front plate. And I've also marked the front plate, as you can see here. So all the screws line up on these lines I've made with the Sharpie. Um, it just, otherwise, because they're all on the inside, when you're putting it together from the outside, you've got no idea where anything is. So by marking them all before I assembled it, it makes it easy for me to put everything all lined up. And then the, slew, the screws just literally slid through. And I used the old technique of unscrewing it backing the screw until I heard a click and I knew it was on the thread at that point and then I screwed it in properly and when I did it just closed the whole unit up for me which is what I was hoping for. So with a bit of luck, I mean it rotates freely as you can see here, um, just give it a good twist and it, it seems to go all right. Um, we've been a bit rough with it so I hope it's okay. Uh, we did price up 
a replacement unit, brushes and everything like that. I'm hoping we don't have to use it, but the only way we're going to know is to reinstall this and see what happens to it. It's now come uh, the moment of truth. Um, we've wired up the relay for the second time. The first time we wired up the relay, it still didn't work. That's why we've taken the motor apart. So now we've taken the motor apart, cleaned that all up. So now we're just hoping that this is all done. Right, the windlass is on. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Happy days! <laughs> it is at last. Hey, working. Um, and um, at the start of this, we I, I said it was the oil. And Beverly said it was an electrical fault. I think we're going to say that Beverly won. And uh, only, only just. Only just. And I was going to have a wee whiskey <laughs> to celebrate. And they've gone. Somebody's been snaffling them. I think it's the crew. <laughs> Certainly is. Anyway. Uh, yeah, they've been snaffled.